In this video, we're going to create an app that will display a times table uh, given a number selected. Um, we can see the form that's been created here and the form basically has some labels just to uh, uh, tell the user what it is and also to give some instructions. And then it has a series of text boxes. The first one is for the user to enter in the number that's going to be used in the times table. The second one is the multiplier and this will go from 1 to 12 so it's a normal times table for argument's sake it's if we're doing the, the two times table it'd be two times one up till two times twelve and the product of each of those um, answers will be displayed in the final text box and then we've got the button at the bottom which begins the whole um, times table being displayed so this is the form that we've started with <clears throat> what we're going to be doing is looking at the use of three different loops as flow controls in Visual Basic to achieve the same, exactly the same result. So the first one we're going to look at is what's called the for loop. So if we just have a glance at the, again at this um, at this form, um, we've got the box here that's called the uh, text boxed number. This is the text box multiplier and this is the text box product. And as I said, these are labels, this is a button. Okay, so let's have a look at the script when the button is clicked. Okay, here is the script when the button is clicked. So let's look at each line in, in um, one at a time. Option explicit on. This is something I've recommended people to use. Um, you type it in, option explicit. When you press enter, option explicit on appears right at the top of the screen. Why it's important to have this is that it will allow error checking to go on. So for instance, if you've forgotten to declare one of your variables or maybe you've misspelt it or left out something in particular, it will pick it up straight away before the program runs so it doesn't suddenly crash without any idea of what's happened. It will also then demonstrate you where the issue is and what the issue um, is. So that's important to have that at the start of every program that you begin. Okay, the next thing is public class form one. Well, we're using form one. So this is the, the or these are below, in, in between the public class and the end class um, markers, uh, the subroutines or the little scripts that are pertaining to this form. And private sub button times table underscore click means that when we click this um, button called button times table um, the following script will appear. Okay so the first thing we do after we start our subroutine or our little script is to declare the storage areas or the variables that we've got in the program. In this we have four that's number multiply product and count again we're using descriptive names so it's clear what these variables are used for and of course then we declare them as a particular storage type or data type and in this case it's going to be integer which means they hold a whole number uh, the next line here now these lines that have a little apostrophe at the start and are in green are what's called comment lines um, they're just a uh, to give the person who's looking at the program an idea of what's going on. They don't participate in the program in any way whatsoever. When the computer runs this program, it will ignore all of the green lines. So the first line of the actual program then is number equals the integer value of text box number top text. In other words, <clears throat> We're, we're capturing the number that was typed into that text box number. So if we just jump back to the form, this is text box number here. So the user will type a number in here and then click on the button to get the times table. So we need to capture what this number is. And this is how we do it here. Number equals integer value of text box number dot text. The text uh, property 
of this uh, text box number is whatever has been typed in it. So once the user types a number, that's what appears. Okay, then we start our loop. <clears throat> and for this loop, we're using a for loop. Now it says for count equals one to 12. In other words, count each time we go around this loop, count is going to start at number one and then increment by one until it gets to 12 and then it will stop. So it'll go around this loop here 12 times. Each time count incrementing by one. In other words, it increases value by one. So one the first time, two the second time, three the third time, four the fourth time, and then up to 12 the 12th time, and then it will stop because it's got to number 12, and that will finish the program. Now inside <clears throat> the loop, um, we've got another comment. It says rewrite the form on the screen. And this one here says me refresh. In other words, what it does is it rewrites the form and any changes that have occurred since last it, it refreshed it on the screen. Now we're going to be putting some things into the text boxes and we want to see those um, each time they're changed. If we don't put that in, we, ju we don't see any changes until we finally get to whatever the number was times 12 equals and we miss the rest of the times table. So with the refreshing of your screen or your little window, in other words this one, each time changes occur, it means that you see each of the values and the uh, multipliers and products in your times table. Okay. So that's what the refresh is all about. Next, do, next we, what we do is we transfer the value that's in count to multiplier. Why do we do that? Well, we do that, we don't have to do that, but we do that because then we understand then that multiplier is the number that's going to multiply whatever the first number that was input into the form by the user. In other words, this is the when the user puts the first number in, let's say it was two, and there's your multiplier and it's going to increase by one each time. So it'll be um, two times one, two times two, two times three, two times four and so on. And the product of those two numbers will appear in the last text box. Then we say text box multiplier dot text equals multiplier. So whatever the value of multiplier is, which was whatever the count will, will appear on the text box in that second text will appear on the form in whatever that uh, whatever the number is in that second text box. Then we do a calculation, product equals multiplier times number. That's pretty straightforward. And then finally, we display the product using the text box product dot text property. In other words, this one here will display the product each time it is calculated. Then um, to actually see it, now if we don't, pause it, the program just rushes through at a mad pace and you don't see any of those changes. But this is pause for a thousand milliseconds, in other words, pause for a second. So you can have a look at each of the times table as it goes through. Next just says that this is the end of the loop, so we go back to the four and start again. And it will do that until count equals 12 and then it will go to um, the end of the subroutine and out. In fact, that shouldn't have been there. Um, I don't know why we had that one. That should be right. So we've got the next here and then which, which goes back to the four for 12 times until the subroutine ends and then that's it. You'll notice that these are indented and the reason the text is indented is just to show where in the program each of the bits belong to each other. Okay, so that's the for loop. And let's have a quick look at the program. So we're going to start it, type in two, click. And there we see how the program actually works. Right, 
So that's using a for loop. Let's look at using a different sort of loop. Okay, here we are again with our form, exactly the same as we had last time. But we're going to have a look at the program that happens this time when we click the display, the, the button here. Okay, let's look at each line of the program. Option explicit's on, same as we had last time. Public class form one, same. Private sub um, button times table underscore click is the same. So this is all the same as we had last time. Um, and so are these. These variables are the same. Now, this is where it changes. We're now using a different sort of loop. We're using what's called a while loop. So this loop says, while a certain condition is true, do the following um, instructions or carry out the following instructions and then come back and continue that loop until that condition is false. So let's have a look at how it works. The first thing we do is we set the value of count. Now count in the last time we looked at the for loop the count value was automatically set by the for loop. In this term, in this one rather, we need to set it um, manually. So we said count equals one, that's where it starts. Count equals one, we're gonna capture the value entered by the user, in which we do that exactly the same as we did in the previous program. And then we're gonna start our loop. Now we only have to do this once. We don't need to capture it each time the um, program goes around the loop. So we've set count equals one. While count is less than 13, well it's one, so it's definitely less than 13. Rewrite the form on the screen. We talked about that in the last one, the refreshing the screen. Multiplier equals count. Well, that's the same. Text box multiplier dot text equals multiplier. These are all the same as we did in the last one. The difference is, is that this while loop comes down here and at the end, it says count equals count plus one. So we are incrementing count manually. We're not re relying on the for loop, for instance, that automatically increments it by one. We are doing this manually. So count equals one, count plus one. Well, if it started at one, it's now got to be two. So end while, come up here. While count is less than 13. Well, it's two now, so that's fine. Does all these, comes here, adds one, three, back again, less than 13, yes. Next one, four, when we add one, back here, is it less than 13? Yes, back again, five, and so on. When it gets through to 12, comes down here, 12 plus one is 13. We come up back up here to while. Is count less than 13? Well, no, because it is 13, which is not less than 13, it is 13. So therefore, that um, condition is now false. The while loop says, well, sorry, we can't run this while anymore, jumps all the way down to the next line, which says end the script. So in this case, the while loop um, does the same, 12 loops, but once it gets past 12, says, no, nah, that's it, we've done, it's now, now it's not uh, less than 13 anymore, we finish off the program. Okay, we're going to look at one more loop. Okay, in our final loop, we're looking again at the same uh, form as we had last time, uh, but this time we're using a different loop. So we'll go through each line. Uh, look, this is the same option explicit. I explained that in the first one. So is this line, so is that line. Um, the same is the number of variables and what we set up. We talked about setting the value of count in the last program and also capturing that first number for the um, times table. What we look at now is the loop itself. Now you'll see this is a, again a different loop again. This is a do loop and what this does is it says do this until this is true. Now that means that it's likely that this is going to run at least once. The while loop may never run. If that condition at the start of the while loop is never true, then the while loop will never ever run. 
where the do loop will run at least once until it checks it. So let's have a look how it runs. Do until count is greater than 12. Okay, we talked about rewriting, so we're not going to do that again. Multiplier equals count, we talked about that. All the same as the while loop, and count equals count plus one, so we increment it by one. Loop says go back to the do and do it again. So we do it again, come back through here, and once we, we initially set count as one, so the first time it comes through, it's one until it, we add one to it, it becomes two. Second time it becomes three, and so on. And the twelfth time it comes, when count equals twelve, which is still not, uh, which is still uh, less than twelve, it will come through again. And then we add twelve plus one is thirteen. Comes back up here. Do until count is greater than twelve. Well, it becomes thirteen. It's greater than twelve. That means stop. Jumps to loop and to the end bit, and that's the end of the script. So this is another way of running um, a loop. And just to show you on this one that the program is still exactly the same. Uh, we'll just run it. So there's our form. We put in two. Oh, let's try two and click. So our timetable appears here exactly as it was in the other two loops. It's just simply a different way of doing it. So these are the three loops, the for loop, the while loop, and the do loop are the three loops that you can use to repeat code in your um, scripts and programs.